Intraocular pressure is an important metric for monitoring ocular health, particularly when we're talking about glaucoma, which is a progressive disease that causes damage to the optic nerve and subsequent peripheral vision loss. Normal intraocular pressure range is usually considered to be between about 11 and 21, though people can still have pressures within this range and have glaucoma, and that's called normal tension or low tension glaucoma. The eye needs to have a proper balance of pressure, high enough to maintain its shape, but low enough to make sure the optic nerve is not being damaged. And in the face of glaucoma and its management, this can be difficult to balance. Since intraocular pressure is the only treatable risk factor for glaucoma, it's no surprise that there's a lot of interest in it and a desire to understand it better. Eye pressure is fascinating, so let's talk about it. This might sound silly, but some people think that high eye pressure would be noticeable, like the eyes start to pop out of their eye socket or something, but that actually is not the case. The eyes can do that, but that's seen in Graves' disease, which is related to thyroid dysfunction. When the eye pressure is high, the eyes do not pop out. On that note, eye pressure isn't something that you can feel happening like some people may assume. In fact, only extremely high eye pressures actually cause pain. That's what makes glaucoma so insidious and dangerous is that there really aren't symptoms of this going on until the vision loss has occurred and usually until it's pretty significant vision loss at that. If you do feel a sensation of eye pressure, it's more likely due to dry eyes, eye strain, or inflammation. Eye doctors can feel generally what the pressure of the eye is, whether it's high, normal, or low, by touching on a closed eyelid. And this is done in cases where instruments may not be available or useful uh, to measure the eye pressure, but that would be the only situation where eye pressure can actually be felt. Eye pressure can be affected by environment and bodily position, and I talk a lot more about that in a separate video I'll link below, but today I wanna to focus on a few aspects of that. So posture can affect eye pressure. It is usually lower when standing or sitting compared to lying down, and it's lower when lying on your back compared to lying on your side or face down. Also being upside down is likely to increase the eye pressure. Mild exercise has been shown to lower eye pressure temporarily, but in talking about exercise, I wanna be sure to mention that anything that causes straining or holding breath, anything with the Valsalva maneuver can cause the eye pressure to spike up. That would include things like lifting heavy weights, for example. Some people are concerned that airline travel will affect eye pressure. But fortunately, since the cabin is pressurized, there's generally not a significant impact. Minor changes in eye pressure in an airplane are more likely to be caused by dehydration or changes in blood pressure. Eye pressure does go down slightly while scuba diving due to the increase in atmospheric pressure and other factors. An increase in elevation while climbing a mountain, for example, is a little harder to pin down. Pressure might increase slightly due to the decrease in oxygen, but it may decrease slightly due to physical activity or dehydration. Generally speaking, eye pressure is likely to increase with sudden increase in altitude, but as the body adapts, it may return to what it was before or even lower due to less production of the fluid called aqueous humor and improved outflow. And that's supported by studies that show that living at high altitudes may cause lower intraocular pressure over time. In the grand scheme of things, however, there are variations between individuals and these changes aren't likely to have a profound effect on ocular health. When the eye pressure is too low, it's called hypotony. Imagine the eye being like a water balloon and some of the water is let out. The eye is a little bit more structured than a water balloon, but it does still rely on the proper amount of fluid inside to function properly. If the eye pressure is too low, we usually start to worry when it's about five millimeters of mercury or less, the structures inside of the eye can begin to collapse inward. Now, this probably looks less dramatic than what you're picturing in your head, 
but the retina and the choroid can start to collapse forward. The inner layer of the cornea, which is the front part of the eye, can become damaged and the cornea can start to swell, making vision blurry. Also the macula in the back of the eye, which is responsible for central vision, can begin to swell. A lot of serious things can happen if the eye pressure is too low. The good thing is this doesn't just happen out of the blue. It is usually a result of trauma or glaucoma surgery, which the goal is to lower eye pressure, working a little bit too well. This is why post-operative monitoring and follow-ups with your eye doctor regularly are really important. Uveitis is inflammation of the uvea, which is basically the middle layer of the eye that contains all of the blood vessels. And this would include the ciliary body, which is the part of the eye that produces the aqueous humor, which is what circulates through the front of the eye and causes the buildup of pressure we see in glaucoma. So when someone has ocular inflammation called uveitis, this can actually cause the eye pressure to go down because the ciliary body is inflamed and it's not able to produce that fluid. On the flip side of that, as someone begins to heal from uveitis, the ciliary body begins to regain its function, so it's able to produce that fluid yet again. But now there can be debris left over from that inflammation and the body producing extra white blood cells. These can clog the drainage route for the fluid. So now that the fluid's being produced normally, but it can't drain out as well, eye pressure can go up on the tail end of this type of ocular inflammation. Also in severe cases of inflammation or inflammation that is not treated promptly, the iris can get really sticky and stick to the lens behind it. This causes a blockage of this fluid movement and drainage route and can cause a buildup of fluid behind that iris causing the eye pressure to spike in what we call acute angle closure glaucoma with pupillary block. This is super dangerous because it causes the eye pressure to go up so high and so fast that you can have vision loss extremely quickly compared to other types of glaucoma, which take years or decades to affect the vision. So this is why if there is any sign of eye redness or pain, it's important to see an eye doctor right away, even if you're not sure, because if you leave this untreated, the problems can be pretty severe and lead to lifelong complications. Eye pressure can increase in response to steroids. The most likely types of steroids to increase eye pressure would be steroid eye drops themselves, but we can also see this pressure increase with other steroid medications, whether it be through IV administration, oral steroids, or even nasal sprays or topical creams. So people who are using steroid medications, especially for an extended period of time, should be monitored for increased eye pressure on a pretty regular basis. If eye pressure does go up in response to steroids, we call these people steroid responders and make a special note in their chart. So extreme caution is taken if a steroid is necessary in their treatment so that we do not forget to follow up on a regular basis and monitor that very carefully. Eye drops can be prescribed to lower the eye pressure and these will be used for the duration of that person taking the steroid and usually discontinued after the steroid is discontinued as well. One thing to keep in the back of your mind is that if you are a steroid responder, even though you typically no longer need the eye drop to lower pressure after stopping the steroid, steroid responders in general are more likely to develop glaucoma eventually compared to the normal population. So that is really something to watch out for and a reason to continue with regular annual eye exams or more frequently if your doctor becomes suspicious of the development of glaucoma. There are actually different types of steroid eye drops and some are more likely to cause a steroid response compared to others. So that's another reason it's really important to know um, if a steroid response is in your history or for a doctor to potentially adjust their treatment if you're showing an increase in eye pressure with the use of steroid eye drops. Speaking of eye drops to lower the eye pressure, one thing that I've seen here and there occasionally is people being diagnosed with glaucoma, being started on a eye pressure lowering drop, coming in seeing that their eye pressure is lowered and then they stop using the eye drop. Glaucoma is much different than let's say a bacterial infection. Glaucoma is a chronic condition that requires long-term treatment. And these eye drops need to be used consistently to keep the eye pressure at a lower level to protect the health of the optic nerve. That compared to a bacterial infection where you take 
eye drops over the course of you know a week or so and then you can stop them because the infection is gone okay glaucoma is a different cause whole different animal and stopping eye pressure lowering drops will not keep the eye pressure low the eye pressure is going to go back up that's an important thing to keep in mind if you are using eye drops to lower your eye pressure for glaucoma exceptions to this rule would be what we were just talking about earlier if your eye pressure went up because of the use of a certain medication like a steroid once that medication is discontinued, typically you can also discontinue that eye pressure lowering drop and it won't be necessary unless glaucoma were to develop in the future. There is so much individual variability when it comes to eye pressure. Not only is it different from person to person, but within that same person, it can vary significantly depending on what day it is, what time of day it is, even depending on the seasons. It's been found that eye pressure is usually lowest in the winter months, like January and December, and a little bit higher in September. Eye pressure varies depending on the time of day in a diurnal pattern, meaning that it has two peaks every day, usually highest in the early morning, and again, higher in the late afternoon, early evening, though this can vary based on the individual as well. What really blows my mind is that within just one person, there can be a difference between their high point and low point for the day of on average five to seven millimeters of mercury, which is a pretty significant proportion considering that the normal range of pressure is in between 10 to 21. Something else that I find really interesting about this fluctuation within an individual is that those without glaucoma have a smaller fluctuation than those who do have glaucoma. And those who have ocular hypertension, which is high eye pressure, but no damage to the visual field, no optic nerve damage, they have an even greater fluctuation in their eye pressure within a day's time. I've talked in my videos before about how difficult glaucoma is to diagnose and treat. And since eye pressure is the only controllable risk factor in glaucoma, we do monitor it regularly. But knowing that these huge fluctuations exist between an individual, even depending on time of day, it can make it really difficult to tell from one appointment to the next whether their eye pressure is still controlled or whether a change in their treatment plan is necessary. That leads me to my next fact. Eye doctors usually want three measurements of eye pressure before starting any sort of glaucoma treatment, and that is to ensure that they have a good understanding of the person's average eye pressure and to make sure that the measurements have been true and accurate. You have to know where you're starting to know where you want to end up and to know if you've made it there. Eye pressure targets are used to help manage glaucoma. This is the eye pressure that your eye doctor wants you to be at to feel confident that the optic nerve damage and visual field loss that occurs in glaucoma will be slowed down. This number is determined by a variety of factors that would include the severity of the glaucoma at the time of diagnosis, the starting eye pressure, a history of glaucoma in the family, presence of other ocular diseases and others. The target eye pressure helps us to make sure that the eye drops or other treatments are working the way that we expect them to. And if they're not, we can either switch out one eye drop for another, add another eye drop, or change to a different treatment. Intraocular pressure readings are affected by corneal thickness. Just like people have different heights, we also have different thicknesses in our corneas. The average is about 555 microns, and if someone has a thicker cornea, the eye pressure is going to measure higher, and if someone has a thinner cornea, the eye pressure is going to measure lower, even if they actually have the same pressure inside. And that's because clinically, the way we measure the pressure is with some sort of contact with the cornea, whether it's the air puff or tapping the cornea directly. We get feedback through the cornea itself, so this thickness affects those results. I want to clarify that having a thick cornea doesn't mean you're more likely to have glaucoma than someone who has a thin cornea. It just affects the way that we as doctors evaluate the information we receive. If your eye pressure seems really high, but we find you have a thick cornea, we might not be as worried as we were initially because we know that it might be artificially high because of that corneal thickness. And it can be the other way around with a thin cornea. Did you learn something new from this video? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on more eye facts, info, and news. Oh, and check out this video next.
Thank you so much for watching.